Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Listen, this is a weird one. I just want to give a few quick tips on to help us travel nurses out with the Relias dysrhythmia test. Um, I see I'm in a few uh, travel nurse groups on Facebook, which I recommend. Uh, you join because uh, you learn a lot about the industry and the business and uh, little quirks and, and, and travel nurse etiquette that only really comes with experience when you join these groups. And a lot of anxiety and stress comes up with these dysrhythmia tests. And I just want to talk about two quick things um, and hopefully this will help you when you go to take your next onboarding exam when it comes to dysrhythmias. I'm not going to talk about numbers. We're not going to get technical. We're not bringing out EKG calipers or anything. We could go down that road. I love EKGs, but it's just two quick layman's tips I wanted to talk about. Um, first, <clears throat> our mobits. I know, I feel like you're not really ready to travel until you understand your Mobits 1 and your Mobits 2 because they cause a lot of confusion in the nursing world. I'm gonna give you the best tip you've ever heard. Listen, only thing you need to know when deciphering between your Mobits 1 and 2 is what your PR interval is doing. That's all you need to know. Don't look at anything else when you're looking at heart blocks your moments, except for your, your, your PR interval. That's going to tell you exactly what you have. Now, let's break it down very simply. Mobits 1, your Winky Bach. A lot of people, uh, they, they have a, a song. It's like, longer, longer, longer drop. Now you've got a Winky Bach. All right, that kind of explains it. Your PR interval is going to get longer and longer and longer until you have a drop in your QRS, right? You drop that entire beat, right? That's your Mobitz 1. That last PR interval before your dropped beat should be pretty long, right? It should be one of your longest because they're getting longer as they go and then your QRS drops, right? That's your Mobitz 1. That's your Winky Bach. Your PR interval changes, all right? Now, your Mobitz 2, right? Your second degree, it stays the same. Your PR interval is rock solid and that QRS just drops, right? You're not seeing any increase in that PR interval. It stays the same and you see a drop in your QRS. That's how you know. It's the easiest way. Don't look at anything else. Don't get confused with anything else. If your PR interval stays the same, you have a Mobitz 2. If your PR interval gets longer before your QRS drops, you have a Mobitz 1. It's, it's simple as that, right? Now, quickly, let's take one minute to talk about our junctional versus our idioventricular rhythms, right? They're both slow. They're both slow, right? They're both going to be, what, 40 to 50, no more than 60 beats per minute, right? So remember that these happen when our SA node, our AV nodes, they've given up. They're no longer the pacemaker. The pacemaker is now in the ventricles. It's now in like the brundle branches, the Purkinje fibers. It's like way, way late, right? So just think, if it's junctional, your QRS is going to be normal. It's not going to be wide. Your idioventricular beats, they're going to have a wide QRS, okay? Now, here's another hint. There's no P wave. There's no P wave because, guess what? That SA node, that AV node, it's, it's not working. It's not firing. So, you're not going to have a P wave. There's no wave. So if you see a nice regular looking QRS, that's slow, that's bradycardic, and there's no P wave. Be very suspicious for a junctional rhythm, right? However, if you're seeing that very slow rhythm with a wide QRS and no P wave, or sometimes the P waves are inverted, okay? That's your idioventricular. Because it's coming from deep in the ventricles, that idioventricular beat's going to be very wide, okay? That junctional beat, though, it's more of a normal-looking QRS. All right, 
So I hope I helped you with four rhythms that you're going to see. And those are four of kind of the tough ones. We know our VTAC, our VFib, our torsades, our, our monomorphic and polymorphic VTACs. You know, we know our AFib, our flutters, but sometimes those blocks and those junctional and those idioventricular rhythms can really get to us, right? So remember, small QR, regular QRS, thin, narrow, regular, small QRS, junctional, wide QRS, we're thinking it's coming from the ventricles, okay? And remember Mobitz 1, your PR interval stays the same. Oh, I'm sorry. Your Mobitz 1, your PR interval gradually gets longer. Ah, right? Longer, longer, longer drop. There you got your Winky Bach, your Mobitz 1, and your Mobitz 2. Those stay the same. Your PR interval stays rock solid until that QRS drops. It's longer than it should be, but it stays the same for each B. All right, I hope I helped. I hope I didn't confuse anyone. I love to talk EKGs. If you have any interest, please comment below. We could talk all day. Um, if you're looking for help with your EKGs and your electrocardiolog electrocardiography um, knowledge, please look for videos by Amal Matu, A-M-A-L, M-A-T-T-U. He's like the godfather of EKGs. He makes it interesting. He makes it fun. He's a professor out of University of Maryland and he has several videos um, on, on YouTube and I cannot recommend him enough. He really helps you understand these things and hammer it home, right? Mobitz 1, PR interval gets longer. Mobitz 2, PR interval stays the same. Junctional rhythms, narrow QRS, it's bradycardic, there's no P wave. Idioventricular, also bradycardic. Wide QRS and narrow or inverted P waves for that one as well. All right, listen, thanks so much for joining me. Let me know if you have any questions um, about any other rhythms. I guess we can go over them together. Have a good night.